Hi, it's Jo Harris and today we're going to be looking at digital images for learning. So what is visual literacy? Well, this is all under the banner of visual literacy and it's the ability to see, understand and ultimately think, create and communicate graphically. Generally speaking, the visual literate viewer looks at an image carefully, critically and with an eye for the intentions of the image's creator. And there are many types of digital images. There's, I'll just click through them to four, through them all advertising, cartoons, charts, collages, comic books, diagrams, DVDs, graphic novels, graphs, icons, magazines, maps, memes, multimodal text, photos, pictograms, signs, slideshows, storyboards, symbols, tables, timelines, videos and websites and that is from a blog called um, from Edutopia 10 visual literacy strategies so have a look at that so you can see it's a very rich uh, way for teachers and it's an example of multi literacy so what are the technical aspects well it's an example of on the web and it's owned by digital images are owned by groups or individuals and they're usually generated by the and they can be either personal or professional and there are a number of providers uh, that give you a library of digital images such as Flickr, Google Images and iStock and you can store them on your personal computer, in the cloud, on Dropbox, Google Drive or on programs like VoiceThread and on social media like Instagram and Facebook. Um, there are many programs that can help you with your digital images, for example resizing and there's an example on this blog, editing, you can make a collage using Glogster or Be Funky and there's an example on this blog of that and PowerPoint. And some Something that I've really fallen in love with which I found is wordle.net where you can make a visual picture of words from a text and that helps you visualize and there's an example here and also answer garden there's an example there is a way of making a collage of words and you can use it for drawing as well with tux paint for example so what can visual images do well usually they're one author and really a picture speaks a thousand words and it caters, they cater to the visual modality of learning and images do evoke emotion, memories and links to past events and it's a fantastic support for the hearing impaired in our community. There are a number of legal considerations and please read that blog and so ultimately you need to get permission to use an image of someone uh, for particularly children for cyber safety considerations and culturally for example you need to give a warning for Aboriginal viewers in case someone on that program has since passed away. Culturally that's um, of great importance. And you need to be considerate of the storage of your images to make sure that they're stored in a safe place and copying and sharing of. For example, sizing, you need to be considerate of the size, the digital size of the image because that will affect the download speed and accessibility of viewers. And it's for me, I've decided I'm just going to use Creative Commons license images uh, just to be safe. And they are a tool. To capture the digital image you can use your camera to take a picture of someone or a picture of a document like a student's work um, which makes it easy with your iPhone, uh, screen capture on your computer and web search. There's lots of images and editing programs. And culturally um, as a society, you know, photo books have got a lot of history for us and the print media, there's a lot of history. And you know, recent times there's been a lot of talk around visualization as a tool to create a compelling future and that uses your visual literacy really because it's rich in modalities and links into brain plasticity and I can't help but mention here as an ex-salesperson probably always be a salesperson is that you visually literate um, I can't help but add that reading body language is a really important skill in life because body language and the non verbal communication is around 90% of the communication so anyone who's literate in reading nonverbal cues from other people will have um, more chance of getting what they want and communicating effectively as well. So what learning outcomes does digital images um, give us? Well the teacher's role is you just really need to be tech able and savvy to set up the activity and uh, to facilitate learning um, and you're so creative in the application you can use it for archiving for exploring um, on a field trip and, and documenting changes in environment over time to witness an event and to observe um, and collect artifacts so is a great way and it's the ability 
and, and, and us as teachers, we need to foster in children their ability to read images. And the Australian curriculum actually goes into it, this in, in that it's how visual information contributes to meaning is created in the learning context. And we need to help our kids learn how to interpret images, uh, both still and moving, uh, graphs, tables, maps, how understanding how to images and language work together. And, and it bridges across many curriculum areas, science and maths, for example, have a different visual, digital, visual images, um, and how we interpret ideas and information. And that's all from the Australian Curriculum General Capabilities Literacy. And our role as teachers is to provide tasks that utilise this pedagogical teaching tool and make sure that when we do so, it's very contextualised and having a clear outcome and learning intent with a clear rubric. And some tools that we can use are the Think, Think, See, Think, Wonder strategy which is on here and the sources on the blog. Um, I found 10 strategies, uh, think aloud, visual thinking strategies like three questions to ask, get our students to ask what's going on in this picture, what do we see that makes me say that and what more can we find and asking the four W's of the five card flicker and the image analysis worksheet and the final frame and that was from a great blog on Edutopia, uh, 10 visual literary strategies. And then there was another blog, 97 Ways to Build, build uh, Visual Literacy, and that's from this blog here uh, from Learning NC Org, which is on this blog for you to click through. And then I found another blog with 15 more strategies on JC Digital Media. And it's too much to go into right now, but they're all listed on the blog so that you can access it if you're interested. And really, a teacher using digital images helps you get a glimpse into the child's mind and the child's learning and their view of the world and now let's look at the student. Students love digital images because it's fun and it's exploring, investigating and creating something. Um, they get to decide what images, it's very learner centered, they get that instant feedback and reward and it's great for their civic success to be able to be visually literate uh, with digital images. Now if you view this tool through the SEMAR lens, an example that I came up with in substitution was a student loads digital photo onto their computer. The next step up is they use those images to create a collage on PowerPoint. The next step up is they create a PowerPoint presentation of images set to music to evoke an emotion, for example. And the redefinition is create a Glogster on a theme with images and embedded uh, Flickr PowerPoint uh, with music shared on a classroom blog. Um, there's some ways that I could see us using that. Now, I just want to look more closely at Flickr. And Flickr, you must be um, signed in as a Yahoo user. It's free. And there is a collection there on uh, Creative Commons license images. And they're all tagged, so it helps you easy to find the image that you're looking for to portray whatever it is you're trying to portray. And because it's digital, you have a link, which means you can embed it on Facebook, Twitter, in a blog, or on Wikispace. Um, so what are the plus minuses and implications of uh, Flickr and digital images? Well the pluses are that it's easy to link, it's great to use Creative Common images for safety on um, in terms of licensing and, and, and not having to attribute images to someone. Great for takeability, great for evoking emotion, memories and connections in our brains, particularly if we're very rich in our uh, visual modality as a learner. Fantastic for anchoring, visualising and reading images is such a skill in life. The minuses are with Flickr is that it's on Yahoo, so it's another account to draw up. The other minus is what if you're visually disabled, that wouldn't work for you. And there are cultural implications that we need to be aware of, which I mentioned previously. The implications are that you need to sign up for multiple accounts, um, be aware of common licensing, author attribution, tagging, publishing, privacy and storage of those images. Well, that's it for that. And I look forward to hearing your comments down below and talking to you soon. Bye.